While most people don't know much about biker clubs, the Hells Angels are a mysterious group that is often misunderstood. Beyond their well-known history of rebellion and a closely guarded code of quiet, there is a set of rules that control how they act and what they do as a brotherhood. These rules, which are not open to the public, give us an interesting and sometimes shocking look into how this notorious group works. Here are 15 shocking rules that all Hells Angels must follow. Guys are one of the first things you need to do to join the club. This means that women aren't allowed to join as members. Still, this doesn't mean that women can't attend any of the club's events. Some women in the club, who are known as old ladies, hang out in the hall. This usually includes the wives or lovers of people who are in the club. The number 81 can even be sewn on their clothes. Because 8 and 1 are letters that stand for H and A, this is known as Support 81 or Route 81 in the club. They still can't go to talks at the clubhouse. You have to follow certain rules to become a Hells Angel. It's not open to women, but only guys can join. To become a Hells Angel, you have to follow some strict rules. This brings up another rule that everyone in Hells Angels has to follow. They need a motorbike and a valid driver's license. That being said, the Hells Angels don't let just any motorcycle join. Members can only ride bikes that were made in the United States. Well-known names like Harley Davidson are especially welcome. Everyone has a soft spot for the Harley, both because it was made in the United States and because of its unique loud rumble. People in the Hells Angels motorcycle show are known to ride legal American brands like Indian and Victory. The third and most important rule is that you must get permission from all Hells Angels members before you can join. This is another strange rule that doesn't get around. It's possible that you shouldn't join the Hells Angels after all. A prospect is someone who is new to the club and wants to join. Right now, they need everyone in the club to vote. So, candidates have to go to each charter in the funding charter's state or region and formally introduce themselves to the club's full patch members. As long as it takes, which could be years, prospects will stay prospects. If they can't get the full vote of every full patch member, they will stay prospects. Another rule that everyone in Hells Angels has to follow is that they won't let anyone join who has abused children or tried to be a police officer or jail guard. The Hells Angels can't have anyone in their group who has already sworn loyalty to another cause or group. The club doesn't let police officers jail guards, or people who have applied in any way into because of its code of silence. Some police departments have called the Hells Angels an organized crime group. Having a police officer as a patch-wearing member would mean that the police could look into the club's business, which is against the club's code of silence. It makes sense that you like bikes, or already have one if you want to join a motorbike club. Everyone who is a Hells Angel has to follow the fifth rule which is shocking. The patch and vest that club members wear are seen as holy by the group. It's also called the full patch. The four pieces of gear are the death head logo, two rockers, and the MC patch below the death's head's wings. It looks like a square. Members must wear these patches whenever they are together because the club has strict rules about what to wear. But keep in mind that unless you're a hell's angel, this type of clothing is against the law and has a lot of brand names on it. People who have been in the club for a long time are the only ones who can wear these patches. Do not think that these patches will make you feel like you belong. Get rid of that thought right away. There are real members who will hurt you badly if they see you wearing these patches without permission. Another rule of the Hells Angels is that when a member leaves or dies, they must return their club patches to the club. This is how it works. The patches are owned by the Hells Angels Biker Club. People who quit the club badly might have to give up their patches and get rid of tattoos that show they are a member. It's possible that Jay, an ex-ATF agent named Anthony Jaybird, says that messing with a member's patch can make things worse. You can't touch a Hells Angel on the back or their patch. I did those things wrong, and they got me into trouble. Sometimes they even hit me. Jude Sher, an investigative writer, 
says that the Hell's Angel's vest is so holy that any damage done to it could be seen as a sin. Let's say a member goes to jail. They must give their coat to one of their brothers to take care of and not let a non-member touch it. John Jordan, a medical officer at the SMDC Health Systems Manager, says that everyone should learn how to help a Hell's Angel in case of an accident or emergency. Cutting through a patch to get to an injury is against the rules. Also, when a Hell's Angel leaves the club, this is a very important thing to remember. You have to give back all the gear and patches if you leave the Angels for any reason. Some sources say that another member also has surgery to remove their scars. This means that if you leave the Hell's Angels, you have to cut all ties with the Biker Club. According to Jay Dobbins, who joined the Hell's Angels and stayed there from 2001 to 2003, Prospects and Totally Patched couldn't talk to each other. This is a strict but necessary rule. There was a lot of talk about how you had to take off your sunglasses and look a Hell's Angel in the eyes if you saw one. They thought this move was important because they wanted to see the eyes of the possibility. Also, Hell's Angels made it clear that riders should take off their gloves before shaking hands with them. The spy also told more about the notorious outlaw biker club and their strange but strict rules about having sexual relationships. Members were not allowed to have any kind of sexual interaction with other members, partners, wives or friends. People often got into more and more fights when this rule was broken. The gang had an order, and old ladies who were married to or in love with gang members were not allowed to be with other gang members. Someone was strongly told that they would be heavily and violently punished if they were caught trying to do something wrong with a member's spouse or partner. People who are part of the Hell's Angels must always watch out for each other. This is clear from the story of Joseph Lancia, who led the RHS Island Hell's Angels group. He took a chance on getting a longer jail term to keep his Cadillac lounge guests safe. People who are part of the Hell's Angels are expected to stay together, even when things get rough. This is clear from the story of Meredith Curley Hunter Jr. He got stabbed after pulling out a gun at the 1969 Altamont Free Concert to shoot bikers. These rules aren't just meant to keep us safe, though. In May 2019, a fight broke out between the Hells Angels and the Bandidos gang in Belp, which is southeast of Bern. The fight went to court. The fight started when the Bandidos tried to open a store in Switzerland. They thought this was an insult and attacked them. He had six guns, an assault rifle, knives, machetes, baseball bats, pepper spray, and tasers. The Swiss police had to step in and take them all. Many people were hurt in the fight, which is why the case went to court. 22 people from different gangs were also charged with being in the fight. The Hells Angels and the Bandidos had to get to Bern in time for the hearing by going from different parts of Switzerland and other countries. Even outside the building, the two gangs were still very angry with each other. There was a small fight outside where stones and bottles were thrown. The Swiss cops had to use water guns and rubber shots to stop the fight between the two groups. Another suspect got 42 years in jail for trying to badly hurt someone, and a third got eight months for fighting. The trial showed that one of the suspects planned to kill someone. 19 bikers were also tried for fighting and helping the bad guys. Not all of them were found guilty, but some were and were given 10-month jail terms that were later stopped. Swiss people paid a lot of attention to this fight, but there was something else interesting about it and the trial that followed. Hell's Angels members wouldn't say anything about the fight during the meeting because they are known for having a strict rule of silence. It is very important to the club to protect its members, both past and present, and they only speak out when they have to. Nobody in the Hell's Angels is allowed to talk to the public, which is another important rule that everyone has to follow. A lot of people know that it's very hard to join the Hells Angels Biker Club, mostly because they have a code of quiet. The secrets and safety of the club are kept safe by this rule. That's why members can't talk to the media about the club, because what they say could get out and be used against them. Most well-known Hells Angels member Sonny Barger says in his book, 
that the group has secret rules and laws that will never be made public. It shouldn't have been a surprise that the Hells Angels didn't talk about the fight or explain what they did. Someone did the same thing at the Hells Angels annual summer meeting in Carlton, Minnesota, which had about 500 members. Reporters were always talking to the members, but they always turned their backs on them or cut them off quickly when they noticed who they were talking to. Because of this tight promise to keep things secret, there is another strange rule that all members must follow to the letter. The Hells Angels really dislike people who watch or tell on others. It's the most important thing and person they hate. To be more specific, this is the major reason police officers can't join the gang. Members will be punished severely if they betray the club or their brothers. Jay Dobbins, an ATF agent, joined the Hells Angels in secret as part of a plan called Operation Black Biscuit. In this case, it's very clear. It was almost two years that I worked as a spy for the Hells Angels. My name is Jay Dobbins and I used to work for the government. People in the gang called me Jaybird, but as a secret spy, my name was Jay Davis. I told them I was a debt collector and a gun runner, which helped me join the Hells Angels Club in Mesa, Arizona. People in the gang were happy to see me because I had the right personality, attitude and looks for the job. I faked the death of a member of the Mongols, a rival biker gang, to get them to trust me even more. I showed the Hells Angels pictures and videos of another police officer claiming to be a dead Mongol member who was buried in a poor grave and covered in lamb brains and blood. This made them happy. As a sign of my love, I even sent them a bloody Mongol patch. But the case was over in 2004, and everyone found out who I really was. Being honest about this betrayal was not easy for the Hells Angels, which was a bad thing. They believed in me and saw me as one of them. I began getting violence and death threats soon after I left the gang. Most of them were directed at my family. In the first case, the Hells Angels posted pictures of what they said were Arizona rats on their website. An email with a picture of Dobbins and the words, hope everything was okay, was one of these. But these texts and pictures had threats in them. So Dobbins and his family had to leave Arizona for a while. They had to move again in 2005 because Dobbins learned that the Hells Angels had agreed to kill him with the Aryan Brotherhood. He then had his home in Tucson burned down in the middle of the night in August 2008, after the ATF made the address public. The good news is that Dobbins' wife and kids were only slightly hurt from breathing in smoke. No matter what, the fire ruined their house and most of their things. Dobbins also said that the Hells Angels and their friends were going to give him an HIV shot, kill his wife and daughter, and take his wife and daughter. When asked about how violent Hells Angels members are, especially when they attack spies, Dobbins said that these threats were truly taken very seriously. The people in the outlaw biker gang may not have college degrees, but they know how to use fear and violence to get what they want. It's a big part of their dangerous way of life. Dobbins said that these people are very dangerous because they are men who live on the edge and are always surrounded by violence. It's not a surprise that this happened because Sonny Barger wrote in his book, Hell's Angels, that the group doesn't like spies. Barger says that most spies are cocky jerks who like being in charge and acting tough. But when the total power of the club hits them, they quickly run away and swear to stay faithful. Barger also said that if these people were in trouble, they wouldn't think twice about breaking their promises of loyalty. Outside of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, it's common for people to leave their brothers to stay safe. According to the club's code of honor, Rat is the worst enemy because they are not loyal and work together. People who are part of the Hells Angels can't be a part of any other riding groups. Everyone in the group has to follow this rule. If someone joins the Hells Angels, they can't help any other group. The Hells Angels are known for always fighting with other biker groups, even though they are sometimes called a social group. We feel bad that we have become the people we used to fight. This idea was brought up in a meeting that I left early from. We used to work with other clubs along the coast, but by 2011, 
we were in fights with the cops and every big criminal bike club in the US. And some people lost sight of why they were living an illegal life in the first place at this point. A fight broke out between two groups, making it look like a military task. George Christie, who used to be the leader of the Hells Angels, said those exact words. After 40 years, he had to leave the club because it was getting more dangerous. It's easy to understand why the Hells Angels make it so hard for their members to join other biker gangs. They have a history of fighting with the Mongols, the Bandidos, and almost every other biker gang. The American Motorcyclist Association won't let the Hells Angels join because of this very strict rule. If you thought these were the only rules, get ready for more. 49. People who are accused of being part of a criminal gang with ties to the Hells Angels went on trial at Spain's top court on Monday. The last time cops cracked down on the group was on the holiday island of Menorca on July 23, 2013. After almost 10 years, this important event took place. And that's when Frank Hainbooth was caught. It was well known that he was a Hells Angel and led the MCA group. He was accused, along with other people, of running a crime ring that did illegal drug deals, prostitution, and money laundering. Frank Armin Heinbooth was a famous German boxer and criminal biker who was seen as the leader of the Hells Angels in Europe. Heinbooth was in charge of the largest and most important handover order in Germany. It was for the Hells Angels. Heinbooth went to MCA in Spain after police searched his home because they thought he had hired several people to kill people. He became the leader of the local Hells Angels group and didn't get into any trouble until 2013. When he was caught, he was accused of using prostitution to make money and making women work in Hells Angels homes. If he is found guilty, he could spend a lot of time in jail. German Frank Hainbooth used to be the leader of the Hells Angels. The government wants him to go to jail for up to 13 years and pay a 4.56 million fine. Police thought the Hells Angels had a bad reputation before Hainbooth joined drug trafficking. This made it even worse. The fact that he was arrested and is being tried also breaks a holy rule that everyone in the group must follow. For people who look tough, the Hells Angels Biker Club may come as a surprise that they don't let their members use IV drugs. The club puts a lot of value on loyalty because they think that drug addiction can make it hard for members to put the club first. Member can smoke weed or cigarettes and drink, but they can't add drugs to their drinks or use hard drugs. Keep in mind that not all Hells Angels use drugs. In fact, a lot of them put their health and exercise first. Even though they have a bad name, the club really does care about following the rules. As a result, another important Hells Angels rule says that all members must always show up to club events and meetings. Becoming a member of the Hells Angels takes years of hard work and is a strong way to show your support for the club. One of the best ways to show this loyalty is to always show up to meetings and answer calls right away. Everyone in the club is expected to show up to every meeting, which is sometimes called church or the clubhouse. In the same way, they can't miss club events because that would show a lack of commitment and respect. The Hells Angels Club puts a lot of value on their meetings because, according to their code of silence, everything said in the clubhouse is kept secret. Members are also expected to go to church every week and take part in group processions and other events connected to the club. Because they are so dedicated to the club, many Hells Angels have trouble keeping full-time jobs because they are always on the road. Because the club comes first, having a full-time job can make a member less committed. Members who don't show up to a clubhouse meeting for a good reason will have to pay a fine of $1.150 to $1.100. The way they work together as a group is another example of this focus. One important rule of the Hells Angels Biker Club is that you must always ride in order. Not only does this rule show the club's order, it also makes sure that it is always followed. This group of Hells Angels is led by a president, vice president, secretary or manager, sergeant at arms, and road captain. Because of this, the leader or president of a charter is always at the front of any parade. 
even if it puts him in the most danger. The vice president, the road captain, and the sergeant at arms are in line after the president. Basically, this means that a Hells Angels member can't leave the club, not even after they die. The process of entering the Hells Angels can be very difficult, but this is on purpose so that the club can find the most dedicated people. Imagine a world where your tattoos are not just ink on skin, but a lifelong commitment, a symbol of an unbreakable bond, where leaving means surgically erasing your past. Stay tuned as we delve into 20 brutal Comanchero rules that are mandatory. In the secretive realm of motorcycle clubs, the Comanchero stand apart. Founded in Sydney, Australia in 1966, this club has etched its name in the annals of biker history. But what really sets them apart? It's their stringent, unyielding rules that govern every aspect of membership. Rule 1. Being a man. The Comanchero Motorcycle Club is strictly for men. Women can't become official members. However, women still play an important part in the club's social life. These women, often called old ladies, are usually the wives or girlfriends of the club members. They are regularly seen at club events and gatherings, showing their support. Even though they don't have the same status as the male members, their presence is valued and they contribute to the club's community feel. This rule shows how the club balances its traditional male-only membership with the involvement of women in a supportive role. Rule 2. Unanimous Approval Becoming a member of the Comanchero Motorcycle Club is not easy. It's not just about filling out a form or paying a fee. Every single member of the club has to agree to let a new person join. This means that every existing member must vote yes for someone to become part of the club. For those who want to join, known as prospects, there's a big challenge ahead. They need to travel and visit every local group of the club, known as a charter. This journey is really important because it shows how committed and serious they are about joining. It's a way for prospects to prove they are willing to put in the effort and time to be part of the Comanchero family. Rule 3. No ties to law enforcement. The club maintains a strict boundary against those with law enforcement connections. This includes anyone who has abused children or those who have aspired to be police officers or jail guards. Rule 4. Ownership of patches and vests. In the Comanchero Motorcycle Club, the patches and vests members wear are much more than just clothing. They are powerful symbols of loyalty and belonging to the club. Each patch and vest tells a story of commitment and is a badge of honor. These items are so important that they are actually owned by the club, not the individual member. This means if someone leaves the club or breaks the rules, they can't keep their patches and vests. They have to give them back because they represent a deep connection to the club and its values. Rule 5. Respect for Relationships The Comanchero Motorcycle Club takes relationships very seriously. They have a strict rule. No member is allowed to have romantic or sexual relationships with the partners of other members. If someone breaks this rule, the consequences are really serious. This rule is all about respecting each other and maintaining trust within the club. It helps to prevent conflicts and keeps the club's brotherhood strong. But what happens when a member decides to leave the club? How far does the Comanchero go to maintain their code of secrecy and loyalty? The answer might shock you. Rule 6. Code of Silence In the Comanchero Club, keeping secrets is a big deal. Members must never talk about club business with anyone outside the club, especially not with journalists or on social media. This rule of silence is really strict. It's about protecting the club and making sure its private matters stay private. This helps to keep the club's activities and plans away from public eyes and ensures that all members are committed to the club's confidentiality. Rule 7. Prohibition of intravenous drugs. While smoking and drinking are permissible, the club draws a hard line at intravenous drug use. This rule underscores the club's emphasis on loyalty and order. 
Rule 8. Mandatory attendance. For the Comanchero, showing up is key. Every member must be at all club meetings and events. It's their way of proving loyalty. If someone misses a meeting or an event without a good reason, they have to pay a fine. This rule makes sure that everyone in the club is committed and takes their membership seriously. It's about being there for the club and each other, no matter what. Rule 9. Riding in order. Even the riding formation is governed by rules, reflecting the club's hierarchy. The president leads, followed by other ranked members, with prospects at the rear. Rule 10. Lifetime commitment. Joining the Comanchero Motorcycle Club is a forever thing. Once you're in, you're in for life. It's not like joining a club that you can leave whenever you want. This lifelong commitment shows the deep, unbreakable bond between the members. It's a promise that lasts even after a member passes away, showing just how strong and lasting their brotherhood is. Rule 11. No disrespecting club colors. Members must fiercely defend their club colors or patches against any form of disrespect. These symbols are not just fabric, they represent the club's honor and legacy. Rule 12. Protection of club property. In the Comanchero Club, protecting what belongs to the club is everyone's job. Whether you're a full member, a nominee, or just starting out as a prospect, you have to look after the club stuff. This means taking care of the patches, the places where they meet, clubhouses, and anything else the club owns. It's about respecting and safeguarding everything that represents the club, showing that members value and take responsibility for their club's assets. Rule 13. Removal of tattoos for departing members. Leaving the Comanchero is not a simple process. Members who decide to leave must have their club-related tattoos surgically removed, symbolizing a complete severance from the club. Rule 14. Secrecy and loyalty. Above all, the Comanchero Club takes secrecy very seriously. Every member has to follow the code of silence without exception. They can't talk to reporters or tell anyone outside the club what goes on inside. This rule keeps everything the club does a secret, making sure that their activities and plans are known only to members. It's a big part of showing loyalty to the club and keeping its business private and protected. Rule 15. Prohibition of intravenous drugs. While some forms of substance use are tolerated, the club strictly prohibits the use of intravenous drugs. This rule is in place to ensure members remain focused and loyal to the club's cause. Rule 16. Mandatory weekly meetings. For the Comanchero, their weekly meetings, which they often call church, are a must-attend. Every member has to be there. These meetings are really important because they keep everyone in the club on the same page and help maintain order. It's a time when members come together, discuss club matters, and strengthen their bonds. Missing these meetings isn't taken lightly, as they are essential for keeping the club united and disciplined. Rule 17. Fines for absence. The club enforces strict discipline. Members who miss meetings or events without a valid reason are subject to fines, emphasizing the importance of commitment and presence. Rule 18. Riding in order reflecting hierarchy. The club's strict hierarchy is evident even in their riding formations. The president leads, followed by other officers and members, with prospects at the end, ensuring order and unity. Rule 19. No infiltration by law enforcement. The Comanchero are very clear about one thing. No one with a history in law enforcement can join. This means if you've ever worked as a police officer or in any similar role, you can't be part of the club. This rule is super important for keeping the club's activities secret and running smoothly. It's all about trust and making sure that the club stays private, away from the eyes of the law. This way, the club can maintain its own way of life without outside interference. Rule 20. Triumvirate Leadership Structure. The Comanchero Motorcycle Club runs on a unique leadership system called the Triumvirate. This structure includes the presidents of different local groups, called chapters, and a national sergeant-at-arms. They work together to make big decisions and keep everything under control. 
This way of organizing things makes sure that the club has strong, centralized leadership. It helps in making important decisions efficiently and ensures that all chapters of the club are aligned and working together towards common goals. The Comanchero Motorcycle Club's rules paint a picture of an organization where loyalty, secrecy, and brotherhood are not just words, but a way of life. These rules are not mere guidelines. They are the pillars that have upheld the club's notorious reputation for decades. But let's circle back to our initial question. What happens to those who leave the Comanchero? The process is as intense as their initiation. Members who decide to part ways must undergo a literal erasure of their past, with club-related tattoos surgically removed. This final act of separation is a stark reminder of the club's unyielding nature, a testament to the seriousness of their lifelong commitment. What do you think about such an intense level of dedication? Share your thoughts in the comments below. In the underworld of illegal motorcycle clubs, the Mongols MC is well known for its history of brutal fights with rival gangs. Let's examine the reasons that have contributed to their fearsome reputation. How did the Mongols Motorcycle Club come to be engaged in violent disputes with other motorcycle clubs and law enforcement organizations? And what are the circumstances that led to these conflicts? Let's check it out! The Mongols Motorcycle Club, based in Southern California, reportedly gained a reputation for brutality after displacing the Hells Angels from the Los Angeles region. According to the research, a majority of the Mongols membership consists of Hispanic males who live in the Los Angeles area, and many are former street gang members with a long history of using violence to settle grievances. According to the source, in order to compete with the Hells Angels for territory and members, the Mongols have formed an alliance with the Bandidos, Outlaws, Sons of Silence, and Pagans. In terms of biker gang violence, the ATF has identified the Mongols as the worst of the worst. Number 5. They will punish members of the team who do not put up a fight. In January of 2004, members of the Bassett Grand Street Gang and the Mongols Motorcycle Club conspired to carry out a drug deal by meeting at a hotel in the state of California. After that, the Mongols were asked to attend a party that was being held by the Bassett Grand Gang. During the party, it was discovered that one of their own had previously been a member of the competing Soreño Gang. One of the Mongols who had previously been a part of the Soreño Gang was subsequently put to death by the Bassett Gang, while another was seriously injured. Two members of the Mongol Motorcycle Club fled the site of the dispute while it was still ongoing. They will be disciplined for their act of cowardice. Number 4. Participation in a Criminal Organization in the course of a criminal and conspiracy investigation, the federal government previously levied a fine of $500,000 on the Mongols Motorcycle Club. The organized criminal enterprise that the violent gang was a part of, according to the prosecutors, included homicide, attempted homicide, and the trafficking of illegal drugs. The members of the club have decided to put up a fight rather than do what the majority of people would do, which is to declare bankruptcy. Interested in knowing why the 2014 tragic shooting is so popular? Let us tell you, it is because of the involvement and heinous deeds of the club's members. But before that, let's discuss one more reason why they are dangerous. Number 3. They have members who are terrifying. Many of the members of the Mongols Motorcycle Club Gang have interesting and unusual backstories, which means that one must approach them with considerable care if one intends to do so at all. The majority of the members come from criminal backgrounds, making them potentially hazardous and difficult to interact with. During the early 1970s, Jesse the Body Ventura was a major member of the gang and went by the alias The Body. He held the position of Sergeant at Arms for the Dago chapter. The other members of his group dubbed him Superman because of his imposing stature. In addition to being an actor and a former governor, he has worked as a professional wrestler for the World Wrestling Federation. Number 2. Murders It is imperative that all members of a gang, even those who are part of the Mongol Biker Club, be vigilant at all times. As a consequence of this, players would need to maintain a state of near-constant readiness to deploy their weapons. 
Even for those who are not directly involved in the conflict, the mistakes that may be made under such extreme pressure can often have disastrous results. Comparable to the incident that took place in 2014 when a police officer lost his life while trying to carry out a search warrant at the apartment of a member of the Mongols motorcycle club gang. The moment the door was opened, members of the gang started firing a shotgun at the target. Number 1 they cannot be readily recognized for the crimes they have committed. As a consequence of the fact that the Mongols have been there since the 1960s, they have access to a wide range of contacts and a significant amount of experience carrying out clandestine operations. They are able to effectively perform any work without drawing attention to themselves in a way that would create suspicion, since they are very good at keeping a low profile. As a direct result of this characteristic, people generally see them as being very hazardous. Because of its expansive global network, involvement in illegal operations, and vicious in-group competition, the Mongols Motorcycle Club is considered to be the most dangerous outlaw motorcycle gang. Because of their unyielding desire for dominance and their ruthless reputation, they are considered a significant threat inside the criminal underworld. What are your opinions on the Mongols Motorcycle Club? Do let us know your views in the comments below.